we went into the house flipping area and we failed. We just failed. We got deals on a contract that were horrible, where they needed one hundred fifty thousand dollars in repairs, and we and, and and they were only worth one hundred fifty thousand dollars after repairs. I mean, it was teardowns, and and it just it just wasn't working. Plus, I had a job that was traveling one hundred percent, and we hated that. That's one of the reasons why we got into real estate. That we hated what we were doing in our jobs, and and so to just trying and trying and trying, we stumbled from this into tax lien investments, and then we bought some tax liens, and they didn't work out. Even though all these strategies work, but we we didn't make them. At the moment, as you know, we are in a severely damaged and distorted national economy. The first six months of 2022 rival the worst we've seen since at least Jimmy Carter. Some economic indicators are the worst we've seen since 1929, 1930, 1931. And on top of that, the Dow Jones had the worst first half of the year in 30 to 40 years. And on top of that, the labor market is tight. It makes it hard to hire who you want, and it's even tougher to keep them. On top of that, some businesses are still dealing with supply chain issues. We're all dealing with the overarching inflation monster. Average inflation to businesses is hovering at 11 to 12 percent. Mortgage rates, as you've heard, have now tipped over 7 percent. And all indications are that it's going to get worse before it even gets better. So I shouldn't have to tell you that we're in a tough place, but let's talk about tough places and tough times. How do you leverage your time? How do you make big profits in uncertain times? Well, here's the answer. It's in real estate and it's by using private money in your real estate business. Right now, foreclosures are at an all time high. They're up 219% year to date over last year. Talk about opportunities to make a lot of money by helping a lot of people. Well, let me tell you, you're going to hear about that from my guest today. My guest is a good friend, Jack Bosch. And in this episode, this German immigrant came to the United States with only two suitcases in his hand. And he went from zero dollars to over one million dollars in real estate in just 18 months. Well, how in the world did Jack do it? Well, he did it by doing deals like turning five dollars into $17,000 in profit within 60 days on just one deal. Well, in this episode, you're going to learn how to do real estate with none of your money. So let's dive in with my yeah, guest, whatever order it is. Jack, welcome to the show, my friend. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Well, my guest today actually immigrated to the United States all the way from Germany back in 1997. And listen, he got here to the United States with only just two suitcases, a bunch of student debt, and all the emotional, you know, stress you can imagine from moving all the way over here from another country. Well, since 2002, my guest and his wife co-founded their investment company. And guess what? They have purchased and bought and sold over 4,000 properties. Stop and think about that. Moved here from Germany in 1997, start investing, and in that period of time, do over 4,000 deals. Well, the method in which he and his wife used, he coined, no pun intended, he coined this phrase, land for pennies, the land for pennies investment method. And when he and his wife started this, they went from zero to a million in just 18 months using this land for pennies investment method. Well, he and his wife, they've done all kinds of real estate deals. They've done land flipping. They got financing notes, tax delinquent real estate, home rentals, commercial, multifamily investments. 
and you name it, and they have done it. Well, this simple little known, what they called land for pennies, real estate niche, now it has provided thousands of people with the opportunity to actually get into real estate investing, the real estate game, without the hassles of traditional real estate investing. So they have now called their method what's called the land profit generator method. Well, in this land profit generator method, their team has spent thousands of dollars on marketing, testing letters, developing contract scripts, negotiating skills, and everything to where they've got all the resources that their students now use in what they call the land profit generator. Well, my guest has not only done all that, but he's a best-selling author. His best-selling financial literacy book is called Forever Cash. And as I just mentioned, he and his wife, Michelle, are the creator of the Land Profit Generator. And with that, I'm so excited to have my friend, fellow mastermind member, Jack Bosch himself, the legend, the myth, the man. <laughs> Well, Jack, here's the deal. I mean, you move here from Germany. I don't know how much English you knew over there in Germany. I don't know. Uh, you still got a pretty cool accent. But anyway, you move over here from Germany in like a very short period of time. You and your wife, Michelle, you buy, you sell over 4,000 properties. What's the secret, <laughs> man? How do, how do you like <coughs> here with two suitcases? to your name, and you buy and sell over 4,000 properties. What, what's the secret sauce, man? Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Jay. It's always wonderful seeing you. Um, known, we've known each other for, for several years, so it's, it's always a pleasure uh, when, I, when, when, when we hang out, when we get to see each other. You're so positive, such a fun guy to be around. So uh, it's, my, it's my honor to be here. So uh, why land and what, what's the secret sauce? Well, we stumbled into this just by accident. I mean, we, we again, you can hear from my accent. I still sound like Arnold. Uh, but um, uh, but and, and to answer your question, yes, I did learn German uh, English in, in high school, but it wasn't very good. I basically caught up over here uh, in the first year of being here. But uh, the, we stumbled into this because... We tried the traditional land or house flipping, actually, we tried to make that work. And the problems were that coming from another country, we had no experience. We didn't know the terminology even of land, I mean, of houses. I mean, you, somebody talks about two by fours, and it's like, two by four what? Is that a Lego? Is that, uh, what is two by four? But, uh, no, no clue what that even means. And when somebody talks about drywall, I didn't even what that, knew what that mean. We didn't know how to estimate repairs. So we went into the house flipping area and we failed. We just failed. We got deals on a contract that were horrible, where they needed $150,000 in repairs. And, we, and, and, and they were only worth $150,000 after repairs. I mean, it was teardowns. And, and it, just, it just wasn't working. Plus, I had a job that was traveling 100%. And... We hated that. That's one of the reasons why we got into real estate, that we hated what we were doing in our jobs. And, and so to just trying and trying and trying, we stumbled from this into tax lien investments. And then we bought some tax liens and they didn't work out, even though all these strategies work. But we, we didn't make them work. We failed at them like so many people fail at real estate. And then once we stumbled into the idea that we could take just like contact some people that owe properties on property taxes and see that instead of attending an auction where they uh, where they would where where this auction was over were overrun by people and they, these properties went up to the wazoo, we're like, could we just go and send them a letter and see if they want to sell these properties, these tax delinquent properties to us before the auction? Well, we did that, and everyone that responded owned land. They were like, what do we do now? So these people own land. And, and so we just figured, hey, we got to be careful with land. I don't know. Let's offer an extra low amount. 
So we got we offered four hundred bucks on a four, on a property that was worth worth like ten thousand dollars, and we got it accepted, and we sold it to the neighbor for four thousand dollars. We're like, okay, well, that is possible because I don't need to estimate repairs. I don't have any tenants. I don't have any toilets. I don't have any termites. I don't have any financing in place because at four hundred bucks you don't need it. I don't have on the, any of these hassles that come with real estate. Real estate is fantastic, but it comes with hassles, and none of them were involved here. It's like okay, we can do that again. So we put a, we got a five hundred dollar, uh, we got a forty acre parcel out in a rural area under contract for four hundred bucks, sold it for ten thousand dollars. Then we got a properties for four thousand dollars and sold them for for fifteen thousand dollars. We got a deal, we got twenty five deals for three thousand dollars and sold them for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. We got um, properties for sixty thousand dollars, sold them for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. And every single time, we didn't even have to go see the property. We could do everything just from home. Because we didn't have to estimate repairs, we didn't have to look at foundations, we didn't have to to deal with negotiation. We just made a low offer, and we specialized in finding the people who are just sick and tired of owning the property, sick and tired of paying property taxes, and they just don't want their properties anymore. And that's the secret sauce. Would you say that your primary target market still today on locating these properties using the land flipping generator method would you say that the majority of your sellers are behind on their taxes great question no no that was only how we got into the market very quickly we realized that that the vast majority of people that we made offers to had already paid back the back tax by the time we got the data from a county or from a data source and by the time we sent them a letter like 80, 90% had paid their back taxes already. They owned these properties free and clear, yet they were still willing to sell these properties for almost nothing. So then we realized, oh my God, if only like five to 10% of our deals are actually tax delinquent, we are restricting ourselves so much if we only go after tax delinquents. So we blew this up and we now go, and for years and years we have gone after really any kind of land. Well, we're focusing on three kinds of pieces of land, infill lots, uh, lots in the path of growth of uh, right, so right outside of larger cities and larger acreage in more recreational areas. These are the three kinds of properties. But in those, ninety-five percent of the deals we do now have no back taxes. They're family-owned properties. In many cases, they've owned them for 30, 40 years. The kids don't want them. The parents are getting older. They they used them perhaps twenty years ago and had fun on the property, but now they no longer want it. Um, they no more, or they had moved. They had plans to move to the property. No longer want to do that either because now grandkids are born. The kids don't want them, or very simply, they they have inherited the property. And heirs don't want land. Heirs want money. They just want to cash out of that thing. So so yes, ninety five percent of our deals are not tax delinquent. That's only how we got into it because we went from house flipping. We couldn't make it work to tax liens. Bought some tax liens and tried to buy some tax deeds. And then we had that thought that. Hey, let's send them a letter to see if they want to sell. Instead of letting their property go to auction, they want to sell. And from there, we then realized that by the time we sent these letters, most people had paid their back taxes already. So we're buying, we're dealing with free and clear properties that just, they just write, written them off, just like garage sale mentality. They're just like, no, I want rent. I want to stay, settle my estate. My kids don't want it. I don't want it. Or the kids have inherited it. And they're like, yeah, I just want some money. Makes a lot of sense. Jack, you and I have been friends for a long time. You know, my niche is raising private money. Uh, I raise private money primarily for single family houses, but you know, you can raise private money for any kind of real estate, commercial <coughs> apartments, self storage, land, even as a matter of fact. I'm just curious though, has uh, private money been a part of your real estate investing career uh, along the way? So for the actual land flipping, um, we were blessed and lucky that we never needed to use private money. But um, that is just probably a coincidence or, or probably we'd be, we walked past a bunch of deals early on because we didn't even know such a thing that like private money existed. Again, coming from Germany, different culture, different way of building, different way of thinking. Uh, we didn't even know that these things exist. So, um, so did we potentially walk by deals that we could have gotten and could have locked down and could have used private money? Yes. 
So what we see now that we teach this now too, we teach this, we have uh, hundreds of those students around or thousands of students around the country that do this successfully. We see that, that sometimes students come across the following kind of scenario. They come across a $300,000 piece of land that they put under contract for $100,000 or let's say $120,000 and they want to sell it. So they put it up for the market for let's say $230,000 and they find a buyer. But that buyer wants to do a wants to do a a a, a seller financing kind of deal. They don't want to pay $230,000 in cash. So that buyer says, "Well, I give you $50,000 down, but the rest I, I I want to finance finance." Well, private money could come in very very handy in this case. Number 1, to allow that 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 student to buy that property and just lock it down. Because when you buy it and lock it down, you don't have to sell it for 200 or 230. You can sell it for 300. It might take a little bit longer, but you sell it for full market value. Secondly, if by doing it, then selling it as a, as a seller financing kind of structure, you can now develop a structure that perhaps you pay your private money from the proceeds there. Or what you can do is you can age the loan for the note for a little bit and then sell that note for perhaps $180,000 and then pay your private money off very quickly. There's many different ways that you can do creative financing in land, and uh, and sometimes private money is very very useful for that. Or sometimes private money can also be used if you have a true trust relationship with somebody that uh, uh, that somebody says, you know what, I, I'm gonna just. We have students do that. They have from friends and family. They raise let's say a hundred thousand dollars, and they use this hundred thousand dollars to buy properties outright. So they're taking ten thousand dollars because typically we're dealing in the about $10,000 market value to $300,000 market value space. So um, you might come across somebody that says, hey, I want to I want, I want, to give you this property, but I, I, I'm agreeing to your price of $20,000. And let's say the property is worth $80,000, but they really need to close quickly for some reason. Well, if you don't have 20 grand, if you have friends and family give you 20 grand to buy that deal, now you own it. And now you can put it on the market without a rush for $50,000, which is still almost half price, and sell it, make it quick to $30,000, and pay your private money back. Like you could even do a split with the private money. You kept the private money, be your money, your equity partner, your money partner. So, so yes, there's lots of use for private money in, in land flipping. Having said that, 97% of our students, they do what's called assignment or double closes. So in essence, they flip properties very quickly without ever using any of their own money. So our typical student doesn't use private money, but what I see it being used again and again is once this student goes from a beginner to an advanced student and they see that they could perhaps take a deal and split it. Like uh, one of our students took a deal that she could get for $50,000 and she could have sold it for for $80,000. So in this case, she would have done a double closing or assignment, made $30,000. But in this scenario, what she saw is that this is a lot right on the street. So she actually bought the property for $50,000. She actually used private money for that. She borrowed from somebody $50,000, bought the property, then subdivided the property into 10 pieces and then sold the 10 pieces to, to a builder for a $300,000 profit. She might have not been able to do that. She was fairly early in her investment stage. She might have not been able to do that with her own money yet because she might have not yet had $50,000 on the sideline. So private money can be tremendously useful to make more complex deals happen or more a little bit more involved deals happen. But the most students, they start out with no, not using any of their own money. Yeah. You know, um, I teach people and I practice in the single family house business. The money comes first. I mean, you know, I, Jack, I know you've heard it a thousand times and I have too, where uh, you'll have some real estate investing Trainers say, oh, get the deal in the contract, get the deal in the contract. The money will show up. And I go, if you need private money to show up, what's it going to do? Rain out of the clouds? I I just don't like that stress. I'd much rather having the money raised, ready to go. Then you don't have to worry about on missing out on any deals. So, um, so I agree with you on that. Uh, I agree with you on that, um, uh, Jay, because like, what I found, babe, if I go back in my own experience, if I would have found the, the greatest deal in the world, let's say a million dollar house for $100,000, I would have not known where to get the money from, right? 
So the thing is, yes, the money, the money will come when you get the right deal. But the money will only come if you already have the right relationships with the money. Right? So I 100% Absolutely. agree. You, you've got to build the money relationships first. Like we, we, we have a multifamily deal. We also do multifamily deal. We have a multifamily deal on a contract that uh, right now that is uh, that we're probably about a million dollars short in raising money for right now. And it's not because we can't raise the money, but we're raising two deals at the same time. So if we put all our effort on one deal right now getting that deal closed, and then we're raising money on the other one. But it's closing within like two weeks of each other. So we're probably about a million dollars short. I'm not losing sleep over that because I got money relationships. I'm like two phone calls and I got and I have the money, right? Somebody just said, Jack, we know you, Nike, we, we, we've done business forever for a long time. We know you're up, uh, you're stand, you stand up guy. Um, here's the million dollars. Here's what we need. Boom, we got the money. We can go to closing. Then we go back fund it and we release the money to the money again with obviously interest and so on. So, so yes, you can find the money. It, it's true that, that once you have, if you have a great deal, the money will come, but the money will only come if you have access to the money. <laughs> you know, Jack, you're exactly right. It's like, you know, I tell people the worst time in the world to be raising private money is when you need it. That's exactly right. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, your banker will give you an umbrella when the sun is shining. Right. So it's like, I want to have my money relationships in place. And speaking of money relationships, I'm so excited, Jack. I just finished writing my recent private money guide and it's free uh, for you that uh, is listening. You can download it for free. The name of this private money guide will get you on the fast track to private money, doing business with individuals, how to locate them, what to say to them, how to get them chasing you. And you never have to ask them for money. You simply learn my private money program and teach it to them. You can download it for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. Again, you can download it. The name of it is seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business and help you build incredible wealth. Download it for free right at the end of this show at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide to get you on the fast track to private money. Jack, as we mentioned before, you and your wife, Michelle, are the creators of what's called the Land Profit Generator Method. Uh, first, let's go and give everybody that website as to how people can learn in detail about the land profit generator method. That is www.landprofitgenerator.com. That's landprofitgenerator.com. But Jack, uh, take, um, take a few minutes and just walk us through. Give us at least a 30,000 view. What are the steps? Step one, step two, step three. How does this, or what is it about the land profit generator method? What is it? How does it work? How do you go from here to there to make money? Using okay, would love to. Thank you very much. I'll do that. So the first step is, again, we focus on three kinds of properties. We focus on infill lots. So think about a street, 35 houses, one empty lot. The houses are worth $500,000 a piece. The lot is worth about 25% of that. <laughs> which is about, what is that, $125,000 or so. And uh, so you you can get a deal like that on a contract, let's say for $60,000 or $70,000, let's say 70, and you sell it to a builder for 95, you make $25,000. The builder is excited because at that price point, even today, they can still build, they can make money, and they can sell these properties. Or the builder can just buy it and hold on to it and wait for the market to pick back up and just do some land banking. Either way, builders are buying these properties right now in like, like that. Second kind of deal, particularly if you offer it below market, if it's 130, one worth 125, you offer it for 95, they're protected. It's great. The second kind of property we focus is the properties, again, in the path of growth. Now, we sell those typically to uh, what we call future retirees, people that are uh, realizing that they have to downsize in cost. They can't afford to live in the city because they don't have the, the financials for it uh, because rent is high and they're going to live on their social security and perhaps some savings. 
So what a lot of them do is buy land 30, 40 miles or 20 to 40 miles outside of a city, put a, uh, like buy an acre or two with all utilities, pay that off in monthly payments. So they love doing the sale of financing, which we love offering because it provides cash flow from land, which is something that most people don't know exists. And then once they're retired, they put a mobile home on, hold, they put a mobile home on there and they have a dignified retirement. So the third kind of property is the larger recreational property. And that one is super attractive, particularly since COVID, for, uh, for the RV crowd. People want more space. They want to have, on, uh, to have their own mini ranch. They want to be out there. So by focusing on these properties, what we, are, what we strategically are doing is we're focusing on properties of which there's a lot of and also of which there's a lot of buyers that are willing to buy these properties. So we're not just buying any kind of junk out there and then hoping it sells. We're buying strategically these kind of properties that have a built-in huge buyer database. Number two. So the second thing we do is, and how do you find those? Well, you look at growing areas in the United States. You look at attractive rural areas, the growing larger cities, and that's where you go. The second thing now is uh, because this is virtual real estate wholesaling, because it's land, you don't ever have to see it. So you can be anywhere in the world and do this. I think we have students in Germany that do 300 deals a year in the United States, and they couldn't even come to the United States during COVID. And now they come a few times a year and travel around a bit and, and meet and have now established a, a team over here and so on. But we also have students that do this whole, absolutely 100% alone from Chile, South America, from Mexico, from Canada, from, again, Germany, from Switzerland. 100% alone in the United States and also people traveling in the RV. So the second thing is, so you can do this from anywhere in the world. So the third thing is, this is a direct mail-based strategy. Direct mail still works for land flipping. It, it's, it's much harder to execute on the house flipping side. We only send on one letter, one time, and in a good market, we get a 3 to 5% response rate. That's about 10x what the house flippers are getting. And if you send secondary or third tertiary letters on there, obviously you can push it up to almost 10% in response rates. That is crazy, but that's our reality. Then we got, so the first step is you select a good area. The second step is you get a, a list of records of property owners, of landowners in that area within that fall in those characteristics of these kind of three properties we focus on. The third step is you send them a letter. We have a standard letter that we have split tested a million times and that that we have not yet been able to beat that gets you those three, four, five percent, well, like four or five percent response rates. Then when we, when these, the letter simply states, ask them to contact us. So when they contact us back, we usually outsource that to a, to a call center. So we don't have to mess with calls from the seller. I love to enjoy my life with my family. Like I don't, we spent a week, a month in Hawaii. We have a place there. We go spend weeks around, travel around the world. And while that happens, phone calls are coming in, the call center are taking them. And then, uh, and then what you do is you do a little bit value analysis. It's very simple because all you need to do, find out the ballpark value. You use sold comparables or you, use, you can sometimes adjust by size. You just assess values. There's five different simple ways that you find the value of the property. And once you're used to it, it shouldn't take you more than two to five minutes to get, the, to, get to a pretty accurate valuation of that property. And then you make an offer. Again, our offer is very important. We sent those offers out by in we sent those offers out in actually uh, by mail again. So we don't sit down at a kitchen table and use our kind of psychological tricks to actually make the uh, to to wrestle the people down in the price. We simply establish an offer, and typically our offers are between ten and forty five cents on the dollar. So yes, yeah, so we get an eighty thousand dollar property for twenty thousand dollars. We get a fifty thousand dollar property for eight thousand dollars. We get a twenty thousand dollar property for for, I don't know, $1,000. Or uh, Juan, Juan Serrano, one of our students, just recently got a property for five bucks, and then he sold it for $17,200. And that's that's kind of the deal. And, and, then, and then we sent these offers out because we're targeting what we call the non-wanters. The non-wanters are people who just written these things off. They have this garage sale mentality. Again, they're heirs, all the things I covered already. They accept the offer, and then we go sell these properties either to realtors or to by using social media like Facebook Marketplace, Facebook Groups, Craigslist, Zillow. You can put properties on Zillow even if you don't necessarily technically own them yet, right? Realtors do it all day long, but you can do that too. And the, our contract gives us the right to market the properties. We have a long time that before we have to close on these properties, we get to back up. We have a provision in our contract that allows us to back out anytime for any reason. So all these different things make this pretty much 
fail proof because the worst case scenario is you estimate the property's worth fifty thousand dollars, you get another contract for ten, and you find out you were wrong, it's only worth twelve thousand dollars. You cancel the deal. You just cancel, right? But that happens extremely rarely. And then we go, we find the buyer, and then we send it to the title company. We close, we do an assignment, a double closing, or we use private money to buy it and then sell it, or we use transactional funding to buy it and then sell it. Either way, there's many different ways to close them. Most of our students use no money. They use assignments or double closes where their buyer's money pays for everything. And then you make money. And our average profits are about, uh, on the low side, you might sometimes do deals that only make you $3,000. On the high side, one of our students just yesterday reported they made $450,000 on an assignment. The reality on an average bread and butter deal, it's more like the $15,000 deals. But, uh, but again, with some being $5,000 and some being $50,000. And that's it. That's how process works. Again, there's no inspection of the property. There's no, uh, there's no talking to banks. There's no talking. There's no sitting down at kitchen tables. There, you rarely talk to sellers. You sometimes obviously talk to buyers because they want to buy from you. And But it's all 100% virtual from the comfort of your home. We have done this since 2002, so for 20 years. The last time we actually saw a property we flipped was 2006. We have not seen a property for 16 years. Well, Jack, that's a fantastic system, a great way to get into real estate. Right after I uh, learned about private money and, and started raising and attracting private money in 2009, um, one of my uh, lead generator methods I was using to find motivated sellers uh, from uh, for sale by owners, FISBOs, was a lot, a lot that had a single wide mobile home on it. And it was on marshland overlooking Bogue Sound off of Highway 24 near where we live. Anyway, if I hadn't had private money, I couldn't have done this deal. But here's the point of my story. I bought it. I got the single wide mobile home moved off of the uh, lot, sold that separately. Now I've got a lot right there, marshland, built it high enough. You could get a nice view of Bogue Sound. And that was my first lot, land deal only. I profited $225,000. And I'll tell you what. I tell you what, Jack, I remember thinking to myself, I sure do like the rehab process on these lots. Let me tell you. I, mean, I love those too. Those rehab processes are the best thing ever because they're exactly <laughs> zero effort. Yes. Well, I love your method, Jack. I love your integrity. I love your spirit. And I love your giving back servant's heart where you've taught thousands of students across the United States, internationally had to do the business, uh, whether they have private money or they don't have a private money using your land profit generator method. And one more time, you can get in touch with Jack and his team at www.landprofitgenerator.com. And you for sure want to check out Jack and his team. Jack, thank you so much for joining me. I hope I get to see you at one of the masterminds that you and yeah. I are a member of soon. I know we got one coming up here over the holidays, so I hope to see you in person. But I'm thank you so much there. for joining me and, and sharing your expertise today. Thank you very much for having me. And yes, I'll be at that one. So we'll see each other in person in a few weeks. Sounds good. Well, there you have it, my friend. Another episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority and your host. And I need your help. I need you to think of just one person, one person in your circle of influence that would enjoy and benefit from this episode and share this episode with them. If you happen to be listening on iTunes, you know they recently changed it. Go up there in the upper right-hand corner. There's three little dots. Click on those three dots and follow. Just click follow. And I don't want you to miss out on any of our upcoming amazing episodes of Raising Private Money. Here's to taking your business to the next level, and we'll see you right here on the next Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconner.com slash moneyguide. That's jconner.com slash moneyguide 
and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.